Hey guys, Jared with Trident Fly Fishing, and today we're going to be tying a caddis pupa. Super effective. One of my favorite patterns just to swing through some riffles and pick up some trout. And we're going to get going on this thing right now. All right, so we're in the vise today. I have an Umqua competition C300BL, so a barbless curb, curve shank nymph hook. And for a bead, I just have a 1 8 inch tungsten bead in a gloss black. So the first thing I'm going to do on this fly is just start some lead. And I have 0.015 lead wire. You can also use lead free. So I'm just going to start the lead here and it's going to help me with my taper. And it's going to help me seat my bead on here so I can get that on there and it's not going to go anywhere. So I'm going to take a couple wraps. Um, honestly, it's probably about 10 or 8, maybe a little more. It's more by feel than my counting. So I just want it to end roughly above my hook point there. So for thread, I'm going to use UTC 70 in fluorescent green. This is going to create the color of my fly. Oop, my lead moved. So take some wraps behind your lead and then up your lead. We don't want that to move. So this is going to create the underbody color. Um, and I'm going to use clear vinyl for the body. So this is what is going to color the fly. Um, this looks good in yellow as well. Around here we have a ton of these green caddis. So this is what I like to use. This is a super effective pattern. It's a size 12, maybe a little bigger than I typically tie them on. But these are pretty good as a you know point fly or something like that. So bring my thread all the way up and just create a nice tapered body. And I'm going to leave it right behind my lead. Cut or break off your thread. And then we're going to tie in the body material. Uh, for body material, I'm using vinyl rib from Hairline, and this is the nymph size, and it's in clear. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, please make sure that you hit like, um, hit subscribe, hit the bell notification so you're notified of all of our future fly tying videos. That way you won't miss out when we, when we uh, release these videos. So basically, I'm just going to tie this on top of the hook shank and bring it all the way down. So I think my thread moved when I broke off my thread, so I'm going to bring this down a tiny bit more. And again, this is just the underbody, so... I like it mostly down the hook shank, um, whatever that angle is between the hook point and this tie off point looks good to me. You can vary this up, it's not super important. Uh, it's mostly just looks, honestly. Ooh, watch your hook point. Okay, again. <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm going to leave my thread roughly a bead length behind that eye. And then I'm just gonna wrap this up in nice open touching, well not open, touching wraps, but loose, loose. We're not going to pull down on this. This is creating a nice segmented body. Let's just keep going up the hook shank. Try not to compress this too much. And we're going to tie it off right there. Just get a couple good wraps on that. Make sure it's down there and then cut that off. Okay, let's cover that up, create a thread base here, and then we're going to tie in some dubbing. So this blend I have going here is mostly just some uh, laser dub with a little bit of flash mixed in. It's got blue and black and red flash, so it gives it a nice little variation, but it's still black for the most part. And we'll dub this pretty loosely. Um, if you can see what I'm doing, just creating a small noodle that's relatively loose. I might tighten this up. This this is going to get tied in in two different stages here, but we are going to pick this out at the end. Let's tighten that up. You can see it came off my thread just a little bit too much. Okay. And then I'm going to cover that up and create another smooth tie-in point there. So for my legs, I'm going to use a partridge hackle, and I've prepped this by stripping off half the hackle from one side. We're just trying to get some movement in there, some variation, um, but nothing crazy, so I don't want too, too many on there, so I've stripped them half off. This is basically going to give me one, one and a half turns around this shank without too much bulk. Get that in there nice and tight, and then we're going to carefully wrap this because this is pretty fragile. Just, just stroking the fibers back, so when I wrap this, it goes, all the legs are facing back. And then, because I'm going to put dubbing in front of this too, I guess we got more than two wraps on there. That's okay. But it's still pretty sparse. 
That's about what I want my legs to look like as far as density. And then we're just going to take that out. And I'm going to put dubbing in front of this and it'll control it and kind of push them back as well. So the same dubbing mix. We're just going to get a little bit on there, see how it looks, and then adjust it from there. And again, I'm going to keep this relatively loose. I'm going to hit it with a dubbing needle at the end, so we'll pick it out a little bit. You'll see, I'll use this dubbing here, tighten that up a tiny bit to keep my legs facing back. So because I'm using this chartreuse or fluorescent uh, yellow green thread here, I'm just going to hit it with a black marker real quick, just so when I whip finish, you don't have a green hot spot. You can leave the green hot spot. I just prefer it not to be there. So that's in there. I'm going to throw another one right behind that bead. And then I'll cut that off there. So we're going to go through and take a olive marker and hit the back of this and just go right up the back and just create a darker back with that. Pretty much like that. And then I'm going to grab my brush, pick this out a tiny bit here. And you'll see once this starts laying back in the water, you'll create um, the effect of trapped air under here. And it's really going to look like a pupa that's coming up to the surface. Guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for watching. Let us know what you think about this fly in the comments below. And we'll see you next time.